Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday, and today we're doing a release from the late 90s, haven't done too many of these, we've been kind of stuck on the early 80s, so I figured why not switch it up and do 1997 tops, and uh, as the thunder rolls off in the distance, we have lots of storms coming through, so if there's uh, any uh, lightning flashes or thunder in the background, hopefully the lights don't go out here, at least you'll know that that is what is going on. So we're gonna start with series one. You can see that Barry Bonds is on both of these boxes along with his godfather, Willie Mays. Series one is over here. And we have some sponsors for this break. Let me get all your names on the screen. Series one, Matt M's gonna get all the, the bottom right and Darren C's got the top left. Robert LM's got the top right and Philip H has the bottom left. So without further ado, let's uh, get these open and see what we find. Um, these cards back in 1997 were $1.29 per pack, which seems like a pretty good deal nowadays since packs are, what, $3 or so for a hobby pack of tops. Also, it says look for 16 additional Mickey Mantle commemorative um, cards randomly inserted and Willie Mays commemorative cards. This was the last year that I ever collected cards, believe it or not until I got back into the hobby a few years ago. My childhood collecting days ended with this set right here, 1997. I have some of these in my collection, but beyond 97, my collection is missing a bunch of years. So let's take a look at the packs. Let's get Darren C's packs out first. Darren C of Comfort Cards. Hopefully you subscribe to him if you haven't already. There's what the wrapper looks like. I like the wrapper because as you guys know, I like Barry Bonds. I like his rookie cards a lot and collect his cards. A pretty snazzy design. 11 cards per pack. And uh, here are all of the odds. There are some inserts in here. Uh, maze reprints, mantle commemorative. So let's get to ripping and check out the designs. And hopefully these are not bricks. Fingers crossed. Are they bricks? They are semi-bricks. Not terrible. Uh, we got Ray Dorm on top. We've got Matt... Misky next, Mike Fetters, who I think this is an uncorrected error card. I think the uh, number is wrong. It shouldn't be 61. It should be like 80-something. Henry Rodriguez, you might remember Henry Rodriguez was pretty good uh, for a good uh, couple of years in Montreal. 36 home runs in 96. Um, nice season. Check out the back of these cards, too. I really like the back of uh, 97 Tops. Um, has their major league batting record there. Gives you some info on it and a nice picture as well. So this was a nice set. Ken Camnetti, I believe he was the MVP in, uh, what, 97 or so? Um, maybe it was 96. 40 home runs in 96. Ken Camnetti, rest in peace. Rusty Greer. Then we have a Todd Hollinsworth. He's a color analyst now, I think, for the Marlins. He was on MLB Network, but he's got the Gold Cup card which signifies he was the best rookie during that time period. Brad Radke, Dave Nilsson from Down Under. He's from Australia. And then we have a off-center Todd Jones, former closer with the Strohs, and Bobby Chunard, who I don't remember much about him at all. So that's our first pack. No inserts there. Inserts were the big thing back in the day. Now it's looking for autographs. Everybody's all about finding autographs and relics and stuff like that. But back then... We were all about finding inserts. I remember um, it was always a, a big deal to pull an insert from a pack. So here we go. Scott Stahoviak. And then we have an Oral Hershiser. He had a nice long career. Uh, most famous for his consecutive innings scoreless streak back in, what was that, 88, I think that was. You can see, look at all of those wins. 22 wins, 15 complete games back in 88, eight shutouts. He definitely had himself a year back then. There's Davey Martinez, manager for your Washington Nationals, who need to figure out what they're going to do in the bullpen. They got a bullpen earned run average over six, and we have a hit. 16-year-old um, little Eric would have been pretty stoked about this. Sweet strokes, Roberto Alomar. And there, wow, that that is actually pretty nice. I don't know what the odds are of getting a, a sweet strokes card. Let's see if it's on here. It's 1 in 12. 1 in 12, Roberto Alomar. He's a Hall of Famer. The sweet strokes set, um, I'm trying to see if I can find it for you. There's 15 cards in the set. If you believe Beckett prices, this card is worth about $1.50. But, I mean, that's a pretty nice looking card. Let's go to Darren. 
like that one. Jim Tome, you got a Hall of Famer, so back to back Hall of Famers there, Alomar and Tome. Then you got Ar Armando Reynoso from the Rockies. Darren will appreciate him because Darren is a Rockies fan. Tim Crabtree, you got a rookie card there of Kevin Sweeney from the Diamondbacks. By the way, these are our first look at Diamondbacks cards. Diamondbacks came into existence in 98. And then you have an Eric Milton rookie card. You might remember him from his time with the Twins. Had a few good seasons with the Twins. Good old Eric Milton. Next pack for Darren. We've got another Roberto Alomar. That's a nice looking picture. Try to the first card is usually the most bricked card, and then after that we can get him apart a little easier. Marquise Grissom had a nice career. Then we have Derek Bell, Operation Shutdown. Derek Bell, who pretty much gave up on the Buckos in what was that, 2001 or so, 2002. Robert Person, Juan Gon, good old Juan Gonzalez, one of the top cards in the hobby of the 90s. Is he? Um, if you look at his stats, tons of home runs there. Every year he's pretty much good for. A bunch of homers. You see, led the league a couple years there. Aaron Seeley, my brother's favorite player after Jose leaned. My brother and I kind of went in cycles with our favorite players. Um, he liked Jose Lean, then he liked Aaron Seeley, then he went to Paul Maldor, and I kind of did the same thing going from um, Andy Van Slyke to Ryan Sandberg to Cal Ripken Jr. to Mariano Rivera. And we have a Sean Casey top prospect card. Sean Casey. I don't think that's his rookie card. It's a second year card. I think 1996 he's got a tops card, but that's a nice looking card with Dimitri Young. Dimitri Young. All right, next pack for Darren. Let's see what we have here. We've got Jason Kendall Gold Cup card. Bucko Catcher also played with the Royals for a little while and also the A's. Had a very nice long career. Almost thought his career was ending. Um, he had a gruesome ankle injury where he pretty much, he stepped on first base and his ankle just flopped over. It was really, really gruesome. Luckily for him, um, he was able to uh, overcome that. Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer. Pete Harnish, had a pretty nice career. His rookie card is 89. Greg Maddox, nice looking professor card there. Todd Hundley, another guy that had a good career. You can see some high home run totals on the back of his car there. 41 home runs from a catcher in 96. 41 homers. That's pretty crazy. Not too many catchers hitting 41 home runs nowadays. Mark McLemore, middle infielder for the Rangers. Herb Perry. Then we have a Jose Canseco, another big bopper from the 90s. David Wells, a.k.a. Boomer. And Mel Rojas, whose son was in the Pirates system for a while, but... I don't think he ever made it to the bigs. I remember he was a prospect maybe like five to seven years ago. All right, next pack for Darren. We have a Dave Justice on the top. His rookie card is 1990. Dave Justice, another guy that had a nice career. Um, look at the uh, pretty good stats on the back there. Looks like he might have been injured in 96. Didn't play a full season. Jim Edmonds, another guy with a great career. And then we have a good old Ron Karkovice. For some reason, I never really liked Ron Karkovice. Not really sure why. Mickey Morandini. I never liked Mickey Morandini either. I think it's because he turned an unassisted triple play against the Pirates. And I held it against him for whatever reason. Arthur Rhodes had a very long career. Just retired a couple years ago. And we got a Ray Durham. With a little bit of paper loss there. Trying to go slow. So I know you could just kind of like crack these cards all at once and try to get through them. Another Henry Rodriguez. Frank Thomas. That's a nice card. Good old Frank Thomas, maybe turning a double play there, throwing the ball to second base. Barry Bonds, that is the number one card in the set, I think. I think it's card number one. He's on all the boxes. Um, this is before Barry Bonds broke the home run record. This is before Barry was likely doing the uh, steroids. You can see he was putting up great numbers without roids. Um, 42 homers there. Um, didn't need it, Barry, but definitely one of the best players of all time and also one of the most controversial Jay Buhner hit 44 home runs in 1996 and 40 home runs in 95. Another big bopper. Used to love those big hitters of the 90s. All right, here's our next pack for Darren C. Got Bobby Higginson on the top. And then we got Danny Tartable. Another guy that played pretty long. Albert Bell. Then we have a Pedro Stasio. Good old Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer right there. Everybody was all about Piazza in 1993. 
Mickey Mantle reprint card, Sport Magazine's 1960 All Star Selection. So this is a 61 Tops card, I think, and uh, that's a nice card. Mickey Mantle. Those are inserted roughly one every 12, I think. Yep, one every 12. So Darren gets that one. Those are nice. Always like the Mantle cards. Gonna make sure this one comes off with no paper loss whatsoever. Another Davy Martinez, Mark Portugal again. Ben McDonald, a lot of people call Ben McDonald a bust, myself included, but he pitched for a while, um, didn't really live up to the hype. Uh, you can see uh, those earned run averages aren't terrible, like mid fours, but his cards never really took off. Everyone thought his rookie card was going to be worth a bunch of money, but never really uh, got up over, I don't know, a quarter or so after his first year or two. Next pack for Darren, got a Chris Reitz, my rookie card on the back. Carlos Garcia, who was an all-star for the Buccos in 1994, maybe undeservedly so. Unfortunately, that's um, something that happens with the uh, all-star game. There's always a player that's kind of undeserving but has to go to represent their team. Mark Grace, give these a little wiggle here, see if we can get them apart. Doc Gooden, a.k.a. Dwight Gooden. Threw a no-hitter, I think, in 96. Reggie Jefferson. Charles Nagy. Then we have a Robert Person again. We already saw him. Got a Jarrett Wright. Everyone always mispronounced this game or this guy's name as a kid. Uh, probably a lot of you, if you're new to the hobby, have no idea who he is. Mark Gresselonic. Middle infielder for the Stru or the Expos and Chris Rietzma. So Darren's down to two packs left. Sorry these are sticking together. It's slowing down the whole process just a tad, but it's letting us talk a little more about these guys. There's uh, Chuck Knobloch, and everyone's ducking down because they know Chuck Knobloch has no idea where the ball's going when he throws it. Like, oh, crap, Chuck's throwing the ball in our direction. Duck. He had the yips, and he would often uh, make a lot of throwing errors, so that's kind of a funny picture that they chose that one. Geronimo Barroa, I believe uh, he hit 36 home runs back in... Um, Yep, 1996, Geronimo Barroa. Big season for him. Rusty Greer. Antonio Osuna. Got a Marvin Bernard. Got another Greg Maddox coming up if I can ever get these cards separated. Oh, let's just see who it is. Oh, that's why. Now we got to see it. I was going to say, oh, let's see, see who it is and forget about him. Just pass him along to Darren. Of course, it's really, really sticking. I don't want to ruin the cards. These high gloss cards can do this. Let's see if we can work with it and get it apart. Give it a little shimmy. Uh, trying to prevent paper loss if possible, but I think it's going to lose some paper. Oh no, we got it. Chuck Knobloch again. So a very Chuck Knobloch pack. Chuck Knobloch, that's a cool one. I don't think I've seen too many of these. First Team All Stars, 1996. You can see he's on there with a couple other guys like Mariana Duncan and uh, Roberto Alomar. First team All-Stars. Um, that's one in 18 packs. So we'll probably pull another one out of the box. That's a cool one. Then we got Greg Maddox. Mariana Rivera. That's a beautiful card. That was one of my favorite cards from 97. I collected Mariana Rivera growing up. Beautiful card. We got an Edgar Renteria and some prospect cards. And now Darren's on to his last pack. Good luck, Darren. This, uh, 90s breaks are fun. I feel like um, this was when I was in my prime and collecting these guys. Followed them a lot. Andy Ashby. We've got Mark Langston on the back. Let's see if we can work these, get them apart a little easier. There we go. Hall of Famer Harold Baines. Dave Nelson again. Jose Herrera. Then we have a Roger Cedeno. Mickey Morandini again. There's Rafael Palmero. For some reason, he decided to try a comeback in the minor leagues at age like 50-something. I think that was last year or the year before. Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. And Jeff D'Amico, pitcher who we always used to mispronounce his name and call him Jeff D'Amico because we were kids. All right, so that's Darren's stack done. Next, we're going to the top right. And Robert L.M. is on the board. So hopefully these aren't as sticky probably just as sticky though we'll see if we can find any inserts in here can work with these a little bit just give them a little wiggle there to get them apart all right we got ricky Batalico after the john franco and there's a sticky card right there 
Randy Velarde. Tim Crabtree, Julio Franco, played for a good many years, almost to age 50. Jim Eisenreich, Randy Myers, part of the Nasty Boys. And then Troy O'Leary. So I think I figured out finally how to get these apart. Just have to wiggle it a little bit. Rather than pulling every card off one by one. Otherwise, it's going to be like a two-hour long video. There's good old Greg Jeffries on the top. Greg Jeffries, of course. Um, was a really hot card back in the uh, late uh, 80s. Everybody wanted Greg Jeffries cards. He was an all-star, believe it or not, in 1994. But um, people realized he was never going to be like a superstar like um, Ken Griffey Jr. ended up being. And Doc Gooden. Ken Ryan. Joe Randa. I remember Joe Randa. Played for the Pirates for a little while. Eric Melton rookie card again. And a couple more prospects that never really panned out. I heard that there is a Derek Jeter autograph card in Series 2, possibly. I think it's like one in every 600 packs, like somewhere around there, 576. So that'll be fun to look for. In the meantime, let's see if we can find any more inserts. There's Steve Traxel, who um, his starts took forever. He was a very slow worker. Glenn Allen Hill. Willie Mays. we got a Willie Mays insert. That's a nice-looking card there. Check out the back. Um, makes it look just like the actual card itself. 1965 Tops Willie Mays. I feel like I'm. That looks almost exactly like a 68 Tops. Very similar. Then we got a Sean Casey card again. And uh, out of these guys, Demi Moss was, I guess, okay for a year or so, but nobody ever really made it too far. From those folks, got John Burke on the back of the next pack for Robert LM. Got Steve Avery. Braves fans appreciate Steve Avery for sure. Good old Sean Green, Marquise Grissom, Barry Bonds again. Brad Klontz with the crazy submarine style motion. FP Santangelo got a gold, gold cup in uh, 1997. Rob Nen, closer there, lights out stuff. John Burkett. Next pack. can find another Mickey Mantle insert. Those are pretty cool. And I like those first team all-star ones. I'd be interested to see another one of those. All right, we've got Darren Fletcher, Wade Boggs, Tom Goodwin. Usually that second card is the one that always has the paper loss. we got an insert coming up. It's a Mo Vaughn. There it is. Mo Vaughn is our insert card. Sweet strokes, Mo Vaughn. He's got a big real estate company now. He's like a big mogul, Mo Vaughn. He's got his stuff advertised at Progressive Field up on the, uh, I don't know, what is that? The upper deck? I think it's like MVP or something, Mo Vaughn Properties. I can't remember exactly, but Mo Vaughn, staying busy after retiring. The guy could absolutely mash. Used to love his batting stance, too, all kind of like crouched over. The guy looked like he weighed about 350 pounds. Really intimidating. He's just kind of like coiled up there at the plate, ready to just mash the baseball to freaking Jupiter. All right, here's our next pack, Norm Charlton. Again, part of those nasty boys that I hated from 1990. Sorry if you're a Reds fan, but I didn't like the Reds back then because they beat the Pirates. And um, there's a Jose, uh, Luis Castillo. Beat the Pirates in 1990 in the uh, NLCS, and Reds will go on to win the World Series in 1990. All right, next we got Gil Mesh, which for some reason, I know you guys don't like Beckett prices, and I can see why, because they're so far off, but Gil Mesh, still worth a dollar and one of the top cards in the set. I don't think they've changed the prices, at least in this 2018 Almanac. Still have the same prices from about 20 years ago. Gil Mesh, I think he was so bad, um, and he just kind of lost it so quickly that he gave up, I think, the last three years on his contract, like $30 plus million dollars. So Gil Mesh, not a bad dude at all. Felt guilty about taking millions of dollars for zero performance. But uh, luckily for him, he made a lot in his career that he'll never have to uh, worry about money again. There's Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer. Chris Hoyles, also another big bopper there, 25 home runs. You don't see too many big bopper catchers anymore that can hit tons of home runs. Gary Sanchez is probably one of the best ones around now. Gary Sanchez could probably end up hitting you over 30 home runs. Uh, let's see what else we have here. 
Some rookie cards back here. Homer Bush, you guys might remember him. Speedy guy, Mike Cameron. Mike Cameron and Raul Ibanez and Jeff Jenkins. This might be the best prospect cards. All three of those guys had very nice careers. So that well, I just got a phone call and it stopped the uh, lot, not live stream. I'm not doing this live, but stopped the video. I forgot to put it on do not disturb. So I was almost halfway into tearing through the pack, maybe a little more. So I stopped when this phone call came. Stupid spam um, phone call. I should have just like answered it and screamed at them. Been like, I'm not interested in your crap. Stop, stop calling me. So, whoops. All right, let's see who we got here. Ron Gant, Geronimo Barroa, Randy Myers, Jim Layritz. We got a Mickey Mantle reprint card there, Ale Bombers. We're looking for another mantle. That's a nice one. Uh, we got Maris on there as well with Al Kaline and Norm Cash. Check out the back. Very nice looking card there. Like that one a lot. I wonder what these are going for. The Mickey Mantle reprint cards. Um, looks like the common mantle, according to Beckett, is worth $8 a piece. So if you go by Beckett prices, that's a pretty good card. Those are worth more than a lot of the autographs that we've been pulling, like Ryan O'Hearns and Cedric Mullins and stuff. So pretty good. Robert LM, you got a Mickey Mantle card there. That is a nice one. So now moving on to the next stack there. Let's go to the bottom left and get Philip H. on the board, see what we can pull for you. Philip H., Hopefully it's pretty good. I like these inserts a lot. That was, oh, I see like a, uh, a pretty nice insert coming up possibly. Let's work with these cards, get them separated there. You see that one? We've got a Carlos Delgado. Let's just show it right now. It's a Topps Finest insert. Remember how Topps Finest used to have those, those uh, crazy little peel away things on them? It is an interleague matchup. Travis Fryman and Gary Sheffield. That's a cool insert card. I wonder what those odds are. I'm always interested. Interleague matchup, uh, one in 36. So this is the hit of the box. And if we would have gotten a refractor, that would have been one in 216. That would have been worth a lot more. Looking off to the side here, a common one of these is worth, um, I don't know, about four four bucks or so. No, sorry, $1.50. So you're looking at about a $1.50 card right there if you go by Beckett prices, which of course you can probably get on eBay right now and get that for 99 cents. Free shipping. Al Leiter, Carlos Delgado, Greg Jeffries again. Start to see some repeats, but that's going to be ending soon. We have a whole second box of the second series coming up soon. Tops limited their um, set from 792, how it used to be. The last 792 set was 1994. Then the strike came in 1995. They cut it to uh, 660. Then it dropped to 440. And this complete set has 495 total. So uh, I think Tops kind of saw the writing on the walls. Like, we got to stop putting so many cards in these sets of all these kind of like crappier guys and make the uh, better players stand out a little more, I guess. Have better odds of pulling the All Stars. Oh boy, this is a sticky pack. I wonder why these are so sticky. I wonder if it's the heat that made them stick together. I don't know if they're sitting in a hot car or whatever. I'm not going to buy. Oh, of course, it's a first team card. If you ever get a first team card, it's going to be uh, really difficult to get apart. Just because, um, I don't know. Had trouble with the other one with the Chuck Knobloch. Trying to work it back and forth here to get it apart for you. Don't want to damage the corners. Man, that's just really sticking together there. Maybe I'll... Here we go. Got a little opening there. Cover your ears if you hate this sound. Oh, I hate that. It's just so stuck. There we go. Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas. Finest all-star card. That's a nice one. Had to see that one. I like those. I just wish they weren't sticking together so much. All that high gloss. Um, backfired on us. So no gum anymore in these packs. They got rid of the gum after the 1991 season. So then they just started dumping like a whole can of gloss on each card. And now they all brick up all the time. So that's one of the main reasons why I always avoid late 90s packs is just because I'm so afraid they're going to be bricks. And that term I use because it's basically just sticking together. 
Kevin Apier with a Steve Avery, Kevin Elster. Luckily, these were not that much per um, per stack, $11 per stack. Bip Roberts. Next pack. Got Paul Wilson. Good old Paul Wilson. Part of the uh, Mets trio of pitchers that were supposed to take their organization to the next level. Paul Wilson, Bill Pulsifer, and Jason Isringhaus in the big three. Unfortunately, all the guys had injury issues. Gary Gaetti with some paper loss. Mike Blowers, Mark Gardner. We have a Joey Hamilton, Sean Dunstan. Craig Biggio Hall of Famer, Paul Shuey, Alex Ochoa. A little bit off-center there. Actually, kind of a lot off-center. And there's the Paul Wilson for Phillip. Next pack. Got an Edgar Martinez on the bottom. Good old Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer. Just work with these cards just a tad. All right. This should be good to go now. Mariano Duncan, who you saw was the third runner-up for the All-Star team for second baseman on that one card, Jacob Cruz. Just listening to the thunder. Jeff Conine, Conine the Barbarian. And there's your Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer. Very deservedly so. Good old Edgar Martinez. Be interested to see if his rookie cards have gone up when the new Almanac comes out. Yes, I do buy the Almanac every year. I like it because it has all the oddball sets in it. Like if I want to look up that Revco set that I bought from 88, just for the heck of it, it's in there. Obviously, I don't really go anything by the, the prices. I mostly just use it for a giant checklist. Also, you can easily look and see all the cards and all the insert sets and gives you extra uh, info about each set. Tells you how, like how much the packs were, $1.29 and 97. And we have an insert card. It's a nice 1956 Willie Mays. That's a nice looking card. 56 Willie Mays. You might be wondering, what's a Willie Mays worth? Well, Willie Mays also signed these cards. This one is not a signature. That's a reproduction. But if you can find a signed Willie Mays card, you're looking worth a couple hundred dollars. Beckett says that the common Mays are worth $4. So that'd be sick to find a autographed Willie Mays. That was, I guess, the big chase card back in 97, and that's the reason he's on the box. Randomly inserted uh, Willie Mays commemorative cards. Starting with his 51 Bowman, all the way up to, I think it's his 73. Got a Jackie Robinson card number 42 on the back. As you know, number 42 was Jackie Robinson's uniform number, and no one will ever wear that number in Major League Baseball again. Marner Rivera was the last one to ever wear it. And we got a Derek Jeter gold cup card on the top. How about that one? Pretty good pack. You got a nice Jeter and also a nice Jackie. Check out the back of the Jeet. Of course, that second card always takes the uh, brunt of the paper loss. All the rest are fine. Terry Steinbach, Terry Adams, Kevin Elster, Ray Lankford, Todd Hollinsworth again, Mark McGuire, Big Mac, Jose Mason. There's the Jackie Robinson card. Card number 42, Jackie Robinson. And uh, they honored him in 1997 because it was the... Uh, 50th anniversary of Jackie breaking the color barrier. He broke it in 1947 with the Dodgers on, um, what was it, April 15th, 1947. He broke the color barrier. So 1997 Tops decided to honor him with a special uh, card all to himself there, card number 42. Also, speaking of the older players, there's no card number 7 in this set. This was the first year that Tops decided to retire card number seven and just not put it in there anymore retire in honor of mickey mantle uh who passed uh, i think he passed in what was it 95 or 96 so the last ever card number seven was in 1996 tops here's an insert card sweet strokes jeff bagwell sweet strokes that's what is that the third one that we've seen jeff bagwell hall of famer that's a nice one congrats on that one philip Always nice looking for something different, finding these insert cards rather than autographs. A little bit of a change of pace. Jim Tomei, Mike Piazza, 96 season highlights, and Scott Rowland. And last pack for Phillip. Then we have the bottom right. 
And then we also have box number two coming up. Whole different series, different cards, different players. Won't see any repeats. Sometimes when I do two boxes, the second box is pretty much uh, all repeats because we've seen most of them before. Mike Fetters takes the uh, hit there. John Mabry, Ray Langford. We've got a Felipe Lira. And then we have a rookie card there of nobody good. Mike Grace, Greg Myers, Jamie Navarro, Brian McRae, and Robert Perez. So that's it for Philip. Got some nice insert cards there, Phil. Let me put those down in this box, keep them out of the way, safe and sound. And next up, we are going with Matt M. Matt M has the bottom right stack. So last uh, stack in the box. For Matt M, let's see if you can find another Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, one of those insert cards. All right, got Doug Drabeck on the top there, former Cy Young Award winner. His son, Kyle Drabeck, played for a little while before injuries cut short his career. I don't think he ever made a comeback, um, unfortunately. I haven't heard anything about him in about five years, but he used to be a top prospect, Kyle Drabeck. Had a pretty nasty curveball, just like his dad. Next pack, we've got some rookies on the back, Kevin Sweeney. And on the front, we got Tim Nehring, Derek Bell, Andres Galarraga, Turk Wendell, who was kind of a strange cat. You might remember he would always jump way over the foul lines when he was coming off the field. Kind of drew some extra attention to himself. Al Leiter, and there is that rookie card there. Next pack for Matt M. By the way, thank you to everyone that bought into this throwback Thursday. I think we sold it out in 30 seconds really quickly. Uh, you guys are... Very generous, and glad that I was able to bring you a lower cost one. I didn't want to do another super expensive one. I mean, there was a box of 77 tops that I was looking at, but it was going for around $4,000, which would have been very expensive per pack. Figured we'd change it up and go a little bit on a budget one there. We got a Mickey Mantle All-Star card there. Mickey Mantle and also Boyer. That's a nice one. There's the back of it. Again, those cards supposedly go for $8 a piece in Beckett. Andy Pettit pulled his autograph last night at a stadium club. I'm interested to see what you guys think of stadium club. I have a poll up right now. You guys can go vote. What would you give stadium club? A, B, C, D, or F? Based on, you know, everything. Take everything into account. Take into account the price. Take into account the uh, cards, the photography, the autographs. Personally, I'd probably give it a C to C minus. Um, I'd give the photography an A. I'd give the card design probably like an A minus or so. Um, really nice and everything. The price, I'd probably give a B. I mean, it's not too expensive, about $80 per uh, box. But the autographs, the uh, various, oh, here we go. No wonder I was struggling. It's an Andres Galarraga. Do you guys really want to see Andres Galarraga? I mean, he was a great player, the big cat. Luckily, this one is sort of coming apart a little easier. Maybe not. Well, you can see his name. From the Rockies, Andre Scalaraga, 96, first team all-star. like that one a lot. Hate finding those cards now because it means I have to struggle mightily to get them apart. The uh, Frank Thomas was the toughest one. He just did not want to uh, make an appearance. Next pack, we've got Russ Davis on top there from the Mariners. We just kind of like bend them back and forth. The second card never bends. It's an Albert Bell. Got to show this one for Chet Lemon if he's in here. Chet Lemon loves Albert Bell. Mike Henneman, former closer. And we have Tim Wakefield, a knuckleballer. And there's our next Willie Mays card. Like these ones a lot. It's not autographed for real. Check out the back. Like these cards a lot. It has a nice little Willie Mays uh, stamp on it. 1967 Willie Mays. Billy Wagner, gold cup card. Really wish that uh, Billy Wagner would get a little more consideration for the Hall of Fame. I mean, he could have played a few more years. He retired, I think, uh, a little bit early. I think he wanted to spend time with his family. Um, but voters aren't really taking that into consideration. But he was lights out for pretty much his entire career. Billy Wagner. If I had a vote, I would probably vote for him. But then the tough part is there's so many deserving guys. You only get 10 spots. So... Guys like Wagner get hurt with the Hall of Fame vote because you can only put 10 guys down 
So then you have to start leaving off guys that you might vote for otherwise. So it's kind of a shame, I guess. The uh, Hall of Fame doesn't want too many guys getting in at once. They don't want to make it too easy. Got a Wilson Alvarez on the back there sticking together a little bit. Had a, another Jim Tomei. Paul Shuey. Jim Tomey once hit a ball completely out of progressive field. Amazing. It was opposite field, too. He hit one out onto the street to left center field. Like, how do you do that? Absolutely a moonshot. That guy had some pop. Jim Tomey, Hall of Famer, and rightfully so. Another Hall of Famer, Harold Baines, with a bit of a uh, paper loss line on him. Sorry, Harold. Kevin Brown, I think he was baseball's first $100 million pitcher. Signed a huge contract, because look at his uh, stats in 1996. A 189 earned run average. That's uh, pretty darn good. Of course, the Marlins in 97 would go on to win the World Series. 1997 Marlins, you might remember that. Edgar Renteria scoring the winning run there. I don't know if anyone saw the 97 Marlins coming. I know I didn't when I was a kid. All right, we got a Trevor Hoffman, Hall of Famer. Ricky Patalico, closer for the 90s Phillies. Another Willie Mays, 1971 Tops. Those borders look extra thick on that 71 Tops card, but that's a cool-looking card. I don't remember the picture being that small for 71, but I might be wrong. And uh, Jeff D'Amico, so that is it for the box. It's all empty. Now we're moving on to Series 2. We've got new cards and new folks in here. Series 2, different players. Series 2 was uh, a 220-card set, so not a huge checklist there. Um, top rookies in Series 2, not a whole lot to uh, write home about. Eric Chavez is a good one. I believe Chris Benson is in here. And uh, Rod Barajas, for some reason, is... Worth a dollar fifty in Beckett. Like, come on, Beckett. Update your prices. Rod Barajas. Bill Miller is in here. So we'll see uh, what we get. We're looking for those insert cards. Darren C's got that top left spot again. Let's check out the pack design. Similar to the last uh, design. You can see this was Series 1 and Series 2. A little bit different. Still Barry Bonds. Grace is the cover. Randomly inserted Willie Mays Finest. Refractors and Mantle Finest finest Refractors. Team Timber, Awesome Impact and Season's Best. We're going to be looking for all these insert cards. And here are all of the odds per pack. Team Timber, hopefully we find one of those. One per box on average. One in every 36 packs. A Maze Refractor would be nice. One out of 180. And a Mantle Refractor, one, one out of 216 packs. Just so you know, I'm looking over a Beckett here off to the side. Uh, a mantle refractor, a common one, is worth uh, 30 bucks according to Beckett. Which, of course, means nothing to me because um, I would have to go look that up on eBay. Oh, these are coming apart a little easier. Maybe not. A tad bit easier. Eric Karos, Darren Lewis, Jeff Reed. Ron Valone, Pirates opening day starter in 2002 for some reason. Pat Henkin, he had a nice career. Ken Griffey Jr., there he is, the kid for all you Mariners fans and pretty much any baseball card fan from the 90s. You guys definitely respect the kid, Ken Griffey Jr. Everybody wanted his rookie card. Guess I should pull out all the stacks, all the packs there for Darren. So he's just doing one of them. All right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I take that off the wrong one? I think I might have made an error there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I might have accidentally taken that one off the wrong one. Maybe not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Weird. Did they give us an extra pack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I just can't count. Whoops. Sorry for that, everybody. I always like to pull out the whole stack like that just so I um, don't mess mess up any cards. No cross-contamination in stacks. But sometimes I get to talking and, and uh, I lose my spot. So trying to premiere tonight for the first time. Hopefully you guys like it. Decided to do something a little different. This way I can interact with you during the um, video. There's another Griffey Jr. So two Griffeys for Darren. And also, no ads. You get to watch it ad-free if you're in the premiere, which is nice. 
All right, here's our next pack. Stan Javier stealing a base there, or maybe just, I don't know, hustling out a double. Willie Adams, Kevin Seitzer, Chad OJ. We used to have mispronounced his name a lot. We used to call him like Chad Ogia when we were kids. Tony Gwynn, rest in peace, Tony Gwynn, and Vladdy Guerrero, Vladdy Daddy, Vladdy Sr., Hall of Famer. Two Hall of Famers in that pack. Gwynn and Vlad Sr. All right, it's about time for an insert card. See if we can find one. Try to massage these slowly. Quentin McCracken is the top card there. Jamie Moyer, Delano DeShields, Orlando Merced. I used to be all about Orlando Merced as a kid. In fact, I invented a game called Orlando Merced and Stuff, where um, basically I'd go through the Pirates lineup. There's the Chris Benson rookie card. That was a hot card back in the day, along with Billy Koch. Um, not worth anything anymore. But I'd go through the Pirates lineup and uh, be like, batting first for the Buccos, Orlando Merced. And then my brother would be about, I don't know, 90 feet away. And I would throw a ball. My brother would have to field it cleanly and quickly and throw the ball back to me to get Orlando Merced out. And um, it was a pretty fun game. And then Jay Bell would come up next. And I always make Jay Bell bunt. So my brother would have to like charge in and make a great play. If he muffed it, then he'd be safe. But then Andy Van Slyke would come up third and hit one like way over my brother's head for a home run. And my brother would have to like go into the next yard and get it. We've got a Frank Thomas Number Crunchers insert card. Nice looking card there. Number Crunchers for Darren C. This one is approximately one in every, um, I'm not sure. Doesn't really say Number Crunchers. Let me see if I can find out anything for you on this one, Darren. Um, I don't know. I'm not seeing Number Crunchers on the list here. Pretty cool, though. SB2, oh, I see, it's not called Numbers Crunch, it's called Season's Best, is what they call it. It has it listed for $2, Season's Best, were randomly inserted, it looks like, into tops at a rate of one in every six packs or so. It's another thing about uh, Beckett that I like. I like having that information at my fingertips, it comes in handy, just to know if you have a rare card or not. So you can see it's one in every six packs, not that rare, but still pretty cool. Frank Thomas, Season's Best insert card. All right, we got a Nomar Garcia Parra on the back there. Everybody remembers him. Had a couple of very nice years. Nice long career, actually. His rookie card spiked there for a while. And it looks like we have a Topps Finest insert card coming up. Uh, got some paper loss on those ones, but luckily they're commons. Check out this one. Very nice. A Mickey Mantle hits 42nd homer for the crown. Very, very nice. Baseball thrills. This is the best one so far. Congratulations, Darren C. Very nice. A Mickey Mantle finest refractor card there worth, um, I don't know, 30 bucks. it looks like. Very, very nice. Congratulations on that one. like that one a lot. Hopefully you don't pull off the, uh, I don't know, pull off, never take off that coating. I never did. I always left it on there whenever I would get Topps Finest cards. That is a nice one. Very, very nice indeed. Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer. Next pack, if I can get it open for Darren. All right, let's work on this one a little bit. Usually these videos I can get done in about under 40 minutes when I do two boxes, but today's gonna be a little longer just because some of the cards are sticking together. Brooks Kieschnick, he was a good pitcher and hitter. Armando Benitez, for you Mets fans out there. Next pack, we got a Sammy Sosa, and we have an insert card coming up. The insert card will just show you. It's a little bit like warped up for some reason. Team Timber, Mo Vaughn, taking a huge hack there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is warped, um, which made it easier for me to pull it apart. Team Timber, what was that, like one in every 36 packs? Team Timber, um... Let's see, the Mo Vaughn books for about, I don't know, looks like a dollar, so not terribly valuable, but still pretty cool. Sammy Sosa, Team Timber, Mo Vaughn. The best Team Timber card you can find is the uh, Barry Bonds, looks like, or Griffey. Maybe we'll find another one, you never know. Charlie O'Brien and Jeff Reed with the close-up. And last one for Darren. Got a John Wazden on the top. 
Kyle Ripken Jr., that's a nice card. And hey, it doesn't have any paper loss. Second card, that's nice. Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. Will Cordero, Rich Aurelia. A few really nice seasons. Pretty nice hitting behind Barry Bonds in the lineup. Bartola Colon, John Wasden. Everybody would pitch around Bonds and then come after Aurelia. You can see he started to take off in 96, hit 26 home runs despite a 239 average, and he would only get better. Rich Aurelia. All right, so that's Darren's stack. Let me get your Mo Vaughn in your stack there. I'm probably going to have to top load that to try to flatten it out for you, Darren. Moving on to the next stack, we'll go to the top right, which is Robert H. Robert H. has the top right. Good luck, Robert. Let's find some cool inserts from 97. I don't know how many of you are still collecting in 97. A lot of people say that they exited the hobby, usually uh, around the time of the uh, baseball strike in 94. That's when the uh, card industry really took a big hit. Hideo Nomo hurls a no-hitter. He was uh, all the rage in 95 when he came over, so it's a double Nomo pack. There's another Hideo Nomo. He used to have that crazy wind-up. His wind-up, you pretty much almost have his numbers facing the batter. Nice big old turn. We've got an Al Lighter on the back. And let's get through this pack. See if there's anyone good. Daryl Strawberry. We have a Willie Mays. Willie Mays tops finest. Check out that one. 1954 tops. So some good cards here coming out of this. A Willie Mays finest card. Uh, books for about four dollars. Looks like four dollars. Not too shabby. And uh, Jose Rijo doing some grounds crew work there while his teammates stretch in the background maybe he was on the dl i think he did uh blow out his arm yep there it is injured did not play so jose rijo still contributing to the 96 reds as a member of the grounds crew very nice that's a pretty funny card jose rijo watering the infield dirt i'm glad he could keep himself occupied all right here's the next pack we got an Alan Bennis, that's Andy Bennis's little brother. Bob Wells, Danny Graves, former closer, Randy Johnson. And we have a Bleacher Reachers, Ken Griffey Jr. insert card. Bleacher Reachers, is that a specified? Not really. It's probably just one of those season best cards. Let me see. Yep, season best number eight. Although that's one of the best cards you can get. Books at four bucks. If you go by Beckett prices, which most of us don't. For some reason, Beckett has Mark McGuire still as the number one card in most insert sets. Honestly, it's because I don't think they've updated their prices since 1998, 1999 on a lot of these 90s um, sets here. I mean, there's like, I think they have 2.2 million cards listed, so I guess that would be a lot of work to update the sets, but maybe they should build an algorithm or something like, uh, I don't know, reduce all the players' cards by a certain percentage and then round to the next quarter or something like that. I do not know. But uh, if you look at the prices in some of these, it's kind of crazy. Uh, um, players that really shouldn't be worth a lot of money in relative to other players are. John Jaha's on the back there. And we have TJ Matthews. Tim Salmon was a nice one. Greg Vaughn was a Power Threat, Walt Weiss, Eddie Murray. It's a nice card. Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer. His rookie card is 1978 Tops. Was kind of bummed out we didn't find the 78 Eddie Murray in the uh, Throwback Thursday last week. Although we did find a couple Jack Morrises and the Nolan Ryan. So whenever we have a break like that where we don't find the good one, that just um, makes you want to do it again. So eventually we'll be probably doing 78 Tops again. And um, another one that we didn't find, we didn't find Ken Griffey Jr. 89 Upper Deck, so we'll be doing that one again sometime. Probably let a few months go by. Try out some other cards in between. All right, next pack, we got a Juan Guzman on the back. And um, Javi Lopez, Jeremy Burnitz. Mike Mussina, Hall of Famer. Jeff Bagwell, another Hall of Famer. No insert card in that one for Robert. Let's see if this next pack has an insert. Hopefully it does. Jason Bure. I don't know. Is he still the bullpen coach for the Indians? He was uh, like two years ago. 
Dave Cohn, Chuck Finley, CJ Nikowski, who's a, an analyst now on MLB Network, does some morning shows with Steve Phillips, former GM, Kurt Schilling, Bobby Abreu, and Jason Bure. Abreu's rookie card is 95 Bowman, so it's an early Abreu. Abreu once held the all-time record for most home runs in a home run derby. You might remember that when he went off at Comerica Park years ago. Just dinger after dinger. He definitely had the uh, power stroke working that night. Bleacher Reachers, Andres Galarraga. Definitely could reach the bleachers. I don't know if you ever saw that home run he hit down at, what was it called, Pro Player Stadium or Joe Robbie Stadium. They always changed the name, but he absolutely mashed one like 500-plus feet into the upper deck. It was literally ridiculous how far it went. So that's it for the top right stack. Robert H., thank you very much for your support of Throwback Thursday. Two stacks left to go. Next up, we got the bottom left stack. This one is going to Chris W. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine packs. It's 36 packs per box. Nine packs per stack. Got Chipper Jones on the back. And let's see who we get here. Sticking together with Dennis Eckersley. Dennis Eckersley found himself in some hot water recently because he started criticizing Marcus Stroman for getting pumped up after strikeouts and showing too much emotion. Basically said that, uh, I don't know, Stroman was kind of a clown and tired. And then uh, Stroman was like, is, is this dude really telling me that, Dennis Eckersley? Because Dennis Eckersley did the exact same thing. I don't know if you, every, it seemed like every strikeout, every save, Dennis Eckersley was pointing towards the sky and like pumping his fists. So kind of a double standard there from Eckersley, and I do believe he apologized for that. And Danny Peoples, don't remember him at all. Mark Johnson, Mark Kotze, I remember Mark Kotze. Jason Conti, and never heard of those guys before. Jeffrey Hammonds, we got our third Ken Griffey Jr., so the kid making his third appearance. Darren got two of them, and now Chris W. gets one. Like that one a lot. All right, let's see what else 1997 Tops has in store. Bartolo Colon's on the back. Might look like a rookie card, just because he doesn't have much major league experience, but I believe I consider 95 um, Bowman to be his rookie, but first Tops card coming off of Bartolo. We got a Bleacher Reacher's Brady Anderson, who would go on to hit 51 home runs. This little guy, or sorry, 50 homers in 1996. He was a leadoff hitter. Never really hit many home runs at all, and then boom, 1996 comes around, and he hits 50 homers. Little skinny guy like that. I think he attributed it to his creatine usage. He's like, yeah, I started using creatine, but I'm not sure if that's all he was using. And Brady Anderson. Always loved his sideburns, though. I always thought those were super cool. But I don't know why. All right, next pack. Got a Denny Nagel and Jason Schmidt in there. I believe they were actually traded for each other. If I'm not mistaken, you can see Braves to Pirates and Pirates to Braves. Mark Witten, Nomar Garcia Para, and Tony Gwynn. One of the best hitters of my generation. Loved watching Tony Gwynn. Never minded getting Tony Gwynn cards and packs, obviously. Multiple time All Star like that. Got a Darren Bragg, Mari Telemaco, Lenny Dykstra, who still uh, is around on Twitter. Willie Green, a little bit of paper loss on the middle ones. Will Clark, Rod Barajas, again, for some reason, that card is listed at $1.50, and I do not know why. Bunch of Diamondbacks rookies there. Armando, Armando Benitez again. So we've got three packs left. John Wasden's on the back. Stan Javier is still on the base. Chris Gomez. Good old Moise Salou. Fouling off a pitcher that's uh, not making solid contact there, Moises. Not your fault the Tops decided to put you out there and give you that picture, though. Eddie Murray. Doctoring up the bat a little bit. Jose Rosado. For some reason, I liked Jose Rosado a lot as a kid, too. I always thought that he was going to be the next big rookie. I think he made an all-star team. That was about it. And we have an awesome impact. No more Garcia Parra. And this one is... Let's check this one up. Awesome impact. AI, this was a set that was a 1 in 18, and this, for some reason, is listed at $12 in Beckett. So this is one of the better cards 
Uh, the only card more, worth more than this is a Derek Jeter. For some reason, Chipper Jones is worth less. Marty Rivera is worth less. Billy Wagner is worth less than this Nomar Garcia Parra. Awesome impact. The Derek Jeter would be the best one if we could find that one. Still pretty cool. Garcia Parra had a great career. Um, I don't think his cards are still worth um, as much as they used to be. But that is nice. Awesome impact. The 97 awesome impact set was mostly young rookies. And uh, Nomar was one of them. The set included uh, Jamie Bluma, Tony Clark, Jermaine Dye, Vladimir Guerrero Sr., Jeter, Andrew Jones, Chipper Jones, Jason Kendall, and so on. Hopefully you find another one of those. If it's 1 in 18, we might find another one in that last stack. Roger Clemens. Rod Beck. Rest in peace, Rod Beck. Todd Zeal. Ugeth Urbina. Talked about him in the stream the other night. I guess got a little bit crazy with a machete on his farm. Down in Venezuela. Vladdy Sr. Kareem Garcia. Prospect that never really um, became a superstar. And that's it for that pack. Getting towards the end of this Throwback Thursday. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Lyle Mouton is the first one. Rick Aguilera, former closer there for the Twins. Kurt Abbott. Tony Clark. Gold Cup card. He's the union rep now, so Tony Clark's still around. Has his hands all over baseball and its labor agreements. Russ Johnson, Enrique Wilson, Mark Bellhorn. All those guys were average. Ben Grieve was a hot prospect back in the day. Unfortunately, he never really worked out. Richard Hidalgo had some good seasons. Paul Canerco actually ended up having a great career. I think he ended up hitting over 400 home runs. Same thing with Derek Lee, over 300 home runs. And Ronald Wright, the Pirate Star prospect, literally did nothing. So, of course, the one guy that is a huge miss on that card belongs to the Pirates. The Pirates were always missing on all their prospects all throughout the 90s. Really tough to even uh, name a player that really was good besides Aramis Ramirez, who we just pretty much gave away. Um, Pirates didn't want to pay him his arbitration salary, so that definitely made a lot of people mad in Pittsburgh. Go to see go see Aramis Ramirez become a superstar with uh, the Cubs, and I think we got Turner Ward for him or someone like that that didn't last. Number cruncher is Tony Gwynn from Season's Best, the first card in the set. That's a nice one, valued at $2.50 it looks like. Denny Nagel, followed by Jason Schmidt again. Those two were back-to-back -back earlier, traded for one another. Chipper Jones and um, a couple other ones, and that's it for Chris W. So we're on our last stack of the night. Thank you so much, everyone, to watching. It was fun um, chatting with you, I guess, if we were able to chat. I'm trying a premiere tonight. Watch the video live with you, commercial-free. Dale F., you have the next one, Dale F., for the bottom right, Series 2, here we go. We got Ariel Praito on the back. He was a Cuban defector. Um, escaped from Cuba, came over. Um, I want to say, I forget who helped him out, but it might have been Euclides Rojas. I can't remember exactly. Euclides Rojas, the Pirates bullpen coach. Awesome dude. Kind of miss seeing that guy. I haven't seen him. About almost two months now since I stopped going to games. Randy Johnson, Andrew Jones, superstar Andrew Jones, was awesome for the first 10 years or so of his career. And then age 31 to 32 hit somewhere in there, and he just totally, totally nosedived. I remember whenever I was watching Andrew Jones play, I was like, that's going to be a Hall of Famer for sure. I mean, pretty much gold glove every year, 30-plus home run bat. But he ended up just losing it. There's the Bill Miller rookie card. I mentioned that one earlier. There's a... No one's good on that one. Another prospect card, Jimmy Anderson. Jimmy Anderson. Poor Jimmy Anderson. He um, had a picture taken of him in spring training with his belly hanging out. Looked way out of shape. And uh, kind of became a meme for the Pirates because the Pirates were so bad. And um, I don't know. Kind of felt bad for the guy. Get an unflattering angle. Same thing kind of happened to um, Kung Fu Panda Pablo Sandoval. Not producing. Gets a picture taken in spring training, making himself look fat, or making him look fat, and everyone thinks that he's out of shape and everything. But with uh, Sandoval, 
he signed like a ninety-six million dollar contract or something like that, about a hundred million dollar contract, and just gave him no production at all. He's been a little bit better recently for the Giants. Now he's back in his uh, his old stomping grounds. Chad OJ again, Shannon Stewart. For some reason, see a lot of Shannon Stewart autographs and archives uh, signature series, retired player edition. I think that comes out in the fall. We have the active player edition comes out. July 10th, so less than two weeks. I can't wait for that. That's going to be fun. Those are like 50-ish dollars per card. And we have a Topps Finest card of 1962 Topps, Mickey Mantle. Check that one out. Very nice. Like that one, the Sporting News Mickey Mantle card. Uh, that one is, once again, valued at, what's it say here? 97 Topps Mantle, $8 for a Finest Mantle. Pretty nice. Congratulations on that one, Dale F., Got some rookie prospects there. And you got four packs left. Four packs left to go on this throwback Thursday. Bring it back to 1997, back when I was in 10th grade. 10th grade, and then, um, I don't know, got distracted. Started working on getting a driver's license and all that stuff, and um, just stopped collecting. I, think, I don't know if that's a common age for us. All of us former collectors, when we stopped collecting, about, what, 16? Mark McGuire's the next one. Bleacher Reachers. Again, this is the number one card in the set, worth $5, according to Beckett. Don't know if I agree with that or not. I bet you could find that for about $0.99 cents free shipping on eBay. But still an awesome card. I think some of, the, uh, some of those prices are a little inflated from all the hype from the McGuire home run chase. His cards definitely spiked, and um, they made sure to correct his rookie card back down. That card peaked out up over $200, 1985 tops. Now that card you can get for easily around 10 bucks in most places, if you can see it at a card show out there. Love that card too, 85 tops McGuire. I never had that card as a kid. My brother did. I remember my, my dad bought us both sets. He bought me the 84 top set. He brought he bought my brother the 85 top set. And um, like a year or two later, the 85 top set just like skyrocketed in value. And I'm sitting there with the 84 top set like crap. I got this crappy set worth like 30 or 40 bucks. And my brother's got a set worth like $400. The Roger Clemens rookie in there, Kirby Puckett, Mark Wire. That set was the hottest set. Um, for a while. Now it's come back down a good bit. Anyway, this is the last pack of Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try to think of something new to do for next Throwback Thursday. Don't know if I'll do another late 90s break just because it does slow it down with all the stickiness of the cards. Let me know if you like the uh, premiere idea that we did with um, chatting with you guys and watching it live commercial free. It was kind of fun. Hopefully for you. Hopefully it's fun for me. I'm going to be in there chatting with you. I'm recording this um, a few hours ahead of time, so it's still light here. I'm going to upload it tonight, um, and hopefully if it goes well, we can do it uh, maybe once a week. No more Garcia Parra is the next one. Awesome impact. We already saw this one before. Again, it books at $12. And Ariel Prieto is the last card of the box. We are empty, and we are out of here. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Once again, please hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Uh, means a lot to me. Also, I'm giving away free All-Star Game tickets or Home Run Derby tickets. Your choice. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and comment. And I'll choose a random commenter for each video to be a finalist. And we'll do a little raffle the weekend before the All-Star Game. So, with that being said, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And see you tomorrow in Fan Mail Friday. Good night, everybody.